of habeas corpus and my case was supposed to be heard I think it was on the 20th uh, of September or something like uh, something like that and uh, the day my case was supposed to be heard they quickly re-detained me under section 8 of the Internal Security Act because they knew earlier uh, seven years before that we had already contested my uh, detention and we won so they re-detained me under a new section and sent me off to Kamunting so my wife had to file a new uh, writ and uh, we had to cancel the earlier uh, thing and start all over again <coughs> and again the court declared my detention illegal and I was again freed from ISA so that's twice in a row that I was freed from my ISA detention and twice in a row the court declared my detention illegal the courts in Malaysia has from time to time itself said that the ISA is an illegal law unconstitutional law it is outdated it is no longer relevant it should be repealed and detainees like myself have been freed. Now, I don't know. Uh, I may not be the first detainee who has succeeded in a writ of habeas corpus. I may be the first one to succeed twice in a row. And I told my wife, let's go for three. <laughs> and she said, you can't be lucky three times in a row. <laughs> so anyhow, they appeal my release. They appealed my release and they tried to get me back. And uh, we contested, of course. But this time it is not me appealing like the first time around. This time it's they appealing against the court's decision to release me. And we asked, who, who are these judges? They refused to tell us who the judges are. My lawyers wrote to the court requesting nine judges. We thought we might get seven at best. Even if we don't get seven, we get five. That's good enough. In 2001, I got five. This time around, I'll settle for five. But if I can get seven, even better. We want to challenge the constitutional aspects of the ISA. Get the ISA declared unconstitutional. They gave me three judges. We said, no, we want five. At least. But we applied for seven. They said, no, the decision has been made. You only get three judges. We said, who made that decision? It's an administrative decision, the word that was thrown. What do you mean by administrative? Who in the administration made that decision? They refused to tell us. They just said, it's an administrative decision. Who are the judges? We can't tell you. On the morning of the hearing, there were four hearings altogether. On the morning of the hearing, I went to court. For the f they said, you don't have to be in court, you know. Uh, you're not being charged for anything. You're not arrested. You're not even on bail. Let us lawyers go to court. I said, no, I just want to go and see who the hell these judges are. <laughs> One of the three judges is my good friend, Augustine Paul. <laughs> He already in 2001 declared me a terrorist. He already said my detention is legal and justified and that I should be locked away and throw away the key. And now you put him again as one of my judges? We objected. We said no. I want Augustine Paul to recuse. And I showed stacks of articles which I've written about him since 1998 because he was also the judge in Anwar's case. I've written a lot of nasty things about him. I've called him all sorts of foul names. I say, even I cite myself for contempt of court. <laughs> How is he going to give me a fair trial? No, he stays. So we said, look, either Augustine Paul recuse, you replace him with another judge, or else we are not playing. We're going off the field. Okay? You can have a one-sided trial. We're not participating in this trial. Uh, <coughs> Haris Ibrahim, Azhar Harun, these are all human rights lawyers, Malik Imtiaz, uh, and some others. 
you know one of them is here today actually uh, they said Pat what do you want to do we're going to walk off the field I say walk off Harry said do you have your running shoes on <laughs> you better run far and fast because if we do not participate they will win they'll get judgment in default we said we tell them we want to 